Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In this mini-project, we're going to explore the relationship between sea ice concentration in the fall and monthly mean temperature at the same time. And we'll explore the relationship near Barrow, Alaska and the Arctic Ocean sea ice concentration. So the first thing you should do is go to the National Snow Ice and Data Center to this website and we'll download the sea ice concentration which is estimated using the brightness temperature and the grid cell sizes are 25 kilometer by 25 kilometer and it's in a polar stereographic projection. So if you go to this website, we want to download the last 15 years of October sea ice concentration from the Arctic Ocean. So if we go to FTP, and then you would register as an optional registration user. And then we'll go to this folder, and then Northern Hemisphere, and then monthly sea ice concentration. And the sea ice concentration is by year, by month, and we want the last 15 years, so 2000 to 2014 in October. So we'll start at 2000. So 2010, that would be the month of October. So you would download this file. And then the same thing, you would download October 2001. So 2001, October, download that file. So you'll download from 2000 to 2014 the sea ice concentration in October. So the next step will be we'll rename these raster images to BIL extension, so banner and leave by line, which is an extension that ArcMap understands. So we'll rename from 2000 to 2014, and they're all tens for October. And you could rename them to whatever you want, and the extension will be .bil. So then if you go to the mini project folder for mini project number eight, there'll be this sea ice TIFF companion files, and those will be companion files such as the header files and the projection files for your downloaded sea ice rasters. So download and unzip this file. And then we have to create header files for each of our BIL files. So I have, when you download it, you'll have a header file, ceice.hdr, and this will tell ArcMap how many rows, how many columns, skip the first 300 bytes, what the upper left X and Y coordinate is, what the pixel size is in meters. So basically you would copy this header file to 2000 header, 2001 header all the way down to 2014 header. And that way ArcGIS will know how to read in each of these rasters. And in a similar manner, we'll have a PRJ file which defines a projection of the raster. And it's documented at this website. And it's a stereographic North Pole projection. So when you download from the Blackboard website, you'll have ceiceprojectionfile.prj. You want to copy that to 2000 PRJ, 2001 PRJ, all the way down to 2014 PRJ. So then we have for each raster, what is the coordinate system of each raster. And then you could add those rasters in ArcMap. So the rasters represent the sea ice concentration scaled by 250. And then we have some special values. So if it's above 250, it's not sea ice concentration. So for example, 253 represents coastlines. Uh, 251 is a mask used to cover the Arctic, etc. So you should have values between 254 and zero, or 255 and zero for each of these rasters. And each of these rasters will be in the polar stereographic coordinate system with 250 meter pixel size. So we're interested in the climate near Barrow, Alaska. So if you go to this website, that will give you the climate stations for Alaska. And we want the Barrow Airport climate station. What is its longitude and latitude? So the latitude is 71 degrees, 18 minutes, and the longitude is 156 degrees, 47 minutes. 
So then we could get in Excel and convert that into decimal degrees. So for example, the longitude would be 0 minus 156 plus 47 minutes divided by 60 to convert it to decimal degrees. So here we have the decimal degrees of Barrow, Alaska, longitude and latitude. And then we could add that as a point event layer in ArcMap. So we use the Make XY Event Layer tool with our Excel spreadsheet, and we specify what field represents the longitude, what field represents the latitude, and the spatial reference will be Geographic Coordinate System Sea Ice. So you've downloaded this PRJ file from the Blackboard website. So here we have Barrow, Alaska, and here we have the sea ice concentration. So the next step is to project that location of Barrow, Alaska into the same coordinate system as our sea ice. So I'll call that Barrow projected. And then we're going to buffer Barrow by a distance of 200 kilometers. So we use the buffer tool and we buffer the projected Alaska in the same coordinate system as our sea ice and then our buffers in the same coordinate system as our sea ice concentrations. So then our next step is we're going to clip out all the sea ice concentration pixels within 200 kilometers of Barrow. So the easiest way to do this is to use the clip tool in batch mode. So basically we could create this first row and then hit the plus button to copy it and we'll copy it so we have 15 rows and then just change your input raster so from 2000 to 2014 and then change your output name from 2000 to 2014 and we're going to cl clip within the geometry of our buffer polygon. So that gives us 15 sea ice concentration rasters cut out within our 200 kilometer buffer and here's the center of the buffer, Barrow, Alaska. And then we can use the set null tool in batch mode. So we have our first row, clip 2000 as the input. And if our question's false, keep the sea ice concentration value and we'll output it to clip 2000, no data. And the question is, is the value greater than 250? And if it is, then it's not sea ice concentration. It will become no data. So then we could select this row and then copy it 15 times and then just change our input to 2001, the false raster to 2001, and the output to 2001, and just do that for each row all the way down to 2014. So then we'll have 15 rasters of sea ice concentration and no data pixels where there was no sea ice concentration. And then you could use a zonal statistics as table tool in batch mode. So within the buffer for our sea ice concentration data, make a table mean sea ice 2000 and the statistic will be mean. So then we'll have the mean sea ice concentration within that 200 kilometer buffer from 2000 all the way up to 2014. And if you'd like, you could use the merge tool to merge our individual tables into one table representing the mean sea ice concentration from 2000 to 2014. And then within that merge table, we can add a field percent and then compute the sea ice concentration percent as whatever the value was divided by 250 times 100. And then I sorted it descending. So we have a pretty good range from 71% sea ice all the way to 0.7% sea ice. Okay, so then what we need is what is the mean October temperature of Barrow, Alaska? So if we go to our website and then Barrow, Alaska Airport, and we want the mean monthly temperature. So here we have monthly temperature listings average. And then October is this column, and we want from 2000 to 2014. So here we have from 2000 to 2014. So then convert these temperatures from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees centigrade. And then the final step is what is the relationship between 
the mean October temperature in Barrow, Alaska, and the sea ice concentration within that 200 kilometer buffer. So develop a plot where the x-axis is your sea ice concentration and your y-axis is the October mean temperature in degrees centigrade. So email me a plot that looks like this and then a label of what the r-square is of this trend line and what the equation of this trend line is.